Hi everyone and welcome back to our widgets series. In this episode, we're taking a look at how to make a custom button for our menu. So we're going to look at how to create a menu with a vertical box and create custom buttons that extend the ability of normal buttons that you have in the UMG designer. So let's take a look and get started. So we're going to talk about how to set up a basic menu inside of a widget. And these are the kind of uh, sort of flow patterns you want to think about when you are putting together a widget. Um, so here we have a canvas panel for our HUD. And what we're going to do is use a panel. So in our list up top here, you'll see there's panels. There are different types of panels. And depending on what kind of menu you want to make, you choose the panel that fits it best. So most of the time, this will be a horizontal box or a vertical box. So let's start off with a vertical box. We'll put that in to our canvas panel. And there it is. We can scale it, reposition it as we so wish. Now with our vertical box, what this will do is it will take whatever contents you put inside of it and stack it vertically. So for example, if I put in some text, it become a text block. And if I do it duplicate and duplicate and duplicate, you'll see it's stacking now vertically. This will so it's just fine for our menu. Now, what we want to do is create buttons for our menu to work with. Now, what you may find is that you probably don't want to be using the default button type. Uh, you may want to make your own button type. So let's go through the process of creating that. We're going to go into our content drawer and we're going to create a whole new widget. And choose user widget. And we'll do W um custom button okay and in here we're going to design our custom button so first of all we need the button type so drag in your button and there we go now we need this to register clicks uh, as well as had also basic hovering and clicking sort of actions inside of here though we're going to put in a few things. The first thing we do is we're going to put in a horizontal box. Now, as we mentioned, these will stack items in different ways and horizontal box stacks things in horizontal. So I'm going to drag that into our button and we've now got a horizontal box in my button. I'm now going to put in a border. Border or image, doesn't really matter. We're going to just make a little white square basically and put in some text as well in our side of our horizontal box. So making sure that our border and text block here are aligned, meaning that they are siblings next to each other. And I'm going to click on my horizontal box, and we're going to stretch this out for the whole width here. So I'm going to go to the horizontal alignment and hit the fill horizontally. Okay, so now we've got this sort of set up over here. Now, the reason why your button looks so big is because at the moment it's set to fill the screen. So this is basically way too big, uh, but this is an actual size of it. This is just a preview size of how it's going to look. If you wanted to, you can change the fill screen here to decide on screen. And you'll see how big it's going to look on the screen. Now, what might be beneficial for us now is changing this to custom on screen. And what this allows us to do is to insert some numbers up top on the right here, basically defining how big we want this to make. So I'm going to leave the height as 100. But the width here, I'm going to put it as 300. And it gives us a better a view, an idea of what kind of things this is going to look like. So here we've got a border and a text block. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the button here invisible. And we're going to handle this block here, this little border here, as the sort of identifier to when the player is hovering over it. So with this button, I'm going to click on it and go to the right-hand side to its background colour. And I'm going to change the background color to have an alpha of zero. Therefore, you can no longer see it. Next, I'm going to go down to my button. And I want to make this button more square-like. So we're not going to make it fill the horizontal alignment and vertical alignment. Instead, we're going to do center, center. You can see, there it is. And the size that this is currently is determined by the padding it has. So we can just use the padding if we want to customize the size of this border, or we can use an image if we want to use a particular image. 
but totally up to you. But we're going to mess about with the padding here just to showcase this working. So I'm going to put in a value of 15. And what that will do is it will apply 15 to all the directions. So up, down, left, and right. And as you see, it's pretty big now. Maybe a bit too big. I'll just bring it down a little bit to maybe 10. That's better. And we've now got it set up like so. So here I want to actually adjust the alignment of our box because as you can see it's not lining up with the top of our text at all and but it's sticking to the bottom I want it being in the middle. Now the problem with text is is that text um, measures from the top, uh, bottom to the top and it is variable based upon the font you're using and so on. So what we do is have to do a manual adjustment to our box here just to adjust it up a little bit. And we can do that over here on the right hand side by going down to its transform properties and render transform. We're going to translate it up a little bit. So X and Y, so we want to choose the Y. And you want it to go up, so therefore you want it to be negative. So that's negative one, and that's looking a bit better there. Also, our text and our box here are too close together. Well, we're going to add what we call padding in between the two. So I'm going to click on my border, go up to the top, and you'll see here the slot for Hosen's Box slot padding. This is different from the padding for the content because the content's inside the border. This is the outside of the border. So padding is the slot we want to write about here. I'm going to put in 10, and you see that's pushing everything away a little bit. So to make this text editable, we need to click on it and click on is variable on the top right here and we're going to rename it and i typically do the identifier prefix and i'll put in here button text hit compile and then on the right hand side go to the graph button on the top right and we should now see the text button text is now a variable and we put this on the pre-construct so this allows us to see the changes we're making in editor um, live, which is really great. So let's take out our text button text and we'll do set text. This allows us to change the text inside of that text widget. So in text, I'm going to drag out and promote to variable. And we'll call this one button text. And I want this to be editable. So we're going to tick the little eyeball icon or tick the box down here and make it editable. And we give the button text variable a default value of button text. Compile and save. So what this does, because it's on pre-construct, it allows us to change what text we want to show on this button in particular. So if we go up to our heads-up display again, and let's add our custom button to our vertical box. There's the button. I can click on it. And now on the right hand side, you'll see I've got button text and I can now write in one here, whatever I want. Play game. So rather than having loads of widgets all in one place, we've now got a custom button, which is a separate widget we've designed already. This makes it a lot easier because if we want to animate this, which we will later on, if we want to animate this, we don't have to animate it for every single button. We have to animate it once and it'll be copied over to every single one of them. But it's still not a button. We still can't click on it. We can't add any actions to it. So how do we do that? Well, let's go back to our custom button. And we click on the button variable that's automatically made for us. If it's not there, so go to the design of view, click on button, and make sure it's ticked on to be variable. While we're here, we'll just rename it. Button, button. Go to the graph again, and you will see, should see it now in your variables. Now, with that button, it has pre-built in events. We've got on click, pressed, released, hovered, and unhovered. We're going to go to on clicked and add the on click event. Now, for this to work in our other widgets, we need to make event dispatches. So we click on this and go on clicked. We'll drag it out and call it on clicked. We also may want to do the other ones as well. So we've got on pressed. On released, uh, on hovered and unhovered. You may not use them all, but it's handy to have. 
And all you're going to do on our button is just add all the events we need for it. And then drag in our custom calls in our event dispatches. Like this. So now, if we go back to our play heads up display, I can click on my button here. And on the right hand side, if I scroll down to the bottom, you will see all of our event dispatches are now showing here. On clicked, on pressed, on released, on hovered, on unhovered. So if I want to add functionality to this thing, we just go to on clicked, and it will create the event that we need for when we detect an on clicked with this widget. Okay, so a really powerful way to create custom widgets to help us add our menus and other objects into our scene very easily and quickly. So one final thing is we're going to add some padding on this because if I was to duplicate this, you can see they're pretty close together and I don't like that. I want to keep them a bit more further apart. So an easy way of doing that, because we want to affect every button like the same, we're going to go to the custom button, into our designer view again, and you're going to click on the root of your hierarchy. So there's a very top one here. So W underscore custom button, this top one here. And on the right hand side, you'll see padding. We're going to add padding to this. We'll do five and hit compile. And that's going to add five padding for every button we have. However, you'll notice that it probably doesn't work straight away. The reason why is because once it's been placed into the level into the widget, if you click on it, you'll see here the padding is still set to zero. But you'll notice that the reset default button is now there. Hit this. It will now be five. It only applies to once you've already placed. If you were to place a new one in, you don't have to do that because it will already have that new padding. And there we go. There you have it. You can now create your own custom buttons and other custom widgets as well. Now, the benefits of these are really great. And one of the benefits is the animation aspect. So in the next episode, we're going to go through how to do animation inside of the UMG designer. And now we can use that as part of our custom buttons design. So if you want to watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ladies, where you'll find it from just $1 a month. Massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support in the channel. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you next time.